Hello, this is Guava Moment with another tutorial before the tournament. Uh, there's two more symbols that I need to explain, the chemical sensor and flip-flops. Let's start with this, the chemical sensor. So in this level, if we look at our input down here, we see that we have a random input. We don't know what our input's going to be. It's either going to be zinc or titanium. It's about a 50-50 chance. Looking at the outputs, we need looks like we need to have one oxygen attached to the zinc, two oxygens attached to the titanium. So the way we accomplish this is by using our chemical sensor to detect which element we have and alter our paths accordingly. So let's start off here. We get our element, happens to be titanium, but let's we don't know what this will be for now. We know that we have to in input an oxygen and double bond it. So if this was a zinc, it would be done. We could just output it. If it's a titanium, we have to alter the path. So let's say, as it was before, or if, I, if it's a zinc, it's done, we can repeat it again. But if it's a titanium, we need to change the path. When the titanium atom moves over this here, it's the chemical sensor, it activates the chemical sensor symbol to alter the path of the red waldo. So it's lit up because it detects the titanium now, alters the path. For the titanium, what we need is to add another oxygen, so we'll just go through this path again, and I'll put these uh, loops here, rotates just for, uh, well, you'll see why I'll do that. So it detects our titanium through the chemical sensor, attaches another oxygen. Problem is now, this thing's done, and we need a way to divert this molecule again into the output zone rather than just repeat this again, because this isn't gonna, that's gonna break. So let's look what happens to this first oxygen. It's down here, it gets rotated around. It's this one right here. This first oxygen is over the sensor now. So we can use another chemical sensor symbol to detect oxygen to tell us that the titanium atom is finished. Chemical sensors don't have to be placed directly on the chemical sensor symbol. So if you look at the text titanium, alters the path down. This point here detects this leading oxygen, moves it over into the output zone. Then we can just, uh, just drop it and output. So let's just watch this for a minute and see that it works. Detected titanium, detected oxygen. The next two inputs are titanium, so we'll just repeat that again. So here's our first zinc doesn't detect oxygen there, doesn't detect titanium, moves the zinc down to the output zone. And so this is a working solution. It's not very fast, but it's pretty good for low symbols. We can actually get rid of a symbol by doing this. We can have blue mash into the wall and it'll try to trigger a bond every single cycle. So that saves us one symbol. Another thing you can do with chemical sensors is sort of use them as a uh, poor man's sink. Let's say, uh, oh here. Let's say we wanted blue to sink here until red hits this sink. Well, you can do it the old-fashioned way and have two sinks, or we can use the chemical sensor. Blue will just sit here trying to go into the wall until a titanium is detected over here, and then it'll head off. It's kind of like using a sink, but it saves a symbol. So I hope you understand chemical sensors now. Uh, don't get too attached. There's a lot of puzzles that involve not using chemical sensors, where having chemical sensors would make things trivial. So flip-flops. Okay, flip-flops. Uh, flip-flops, they're simple to understand, very difficult to master. Let's uh, completely ignore the puzzle right now, let's just look at this. Blue's gonna go around this loop, hitting this output here forever. Let's say we wanted it to hit the output twice, and then have the Waldo escape and do something else. Well, you can put a flip-flop here. It'll hit once, activate the flip-flop, go through a loop again, this time the flip-flop's activated, and it'll escape from the loop. So it went through the loop twice with one flip-flop. Let's say we wanted it to go through the loop four times. Let's 
simple. We could just put another flip-flop there. One, two, three, four. Eight times. Sixteen times. You'll never need to use sixteen times in a loop. Okay, here's a question. Can you tell just from the how the flip-flops are activated, how many times it's gone through this loop? Well, let's say an activated flip-flop is a 1, a deactivated one is a 0. This would be the binary number 1010, which is 10. It's been through this loop 10 times. So let's say you wanted it to go through this loop 3 times. Well, then you can start getting into some tricky arrangements. Let's uh, have a little thing that I... it's called a bouncer in the tutorial I saw. It bounces it back once and then goes off. So let's watch this. One, two, bounce, three. So it went through this loop three times with this arrangement. This will be six times. And this is nine times, and other such arrangements of multiples of three. So we have uh, flip-flop uh, things that'll do loops two times, three times, four times. What about five times? Uh, this is what a five-time flip-flop mechanism looks like. It's complicated. This is where it gets a little bit nasty. You have to make sure you go through the loop the right number of times and then have all of your flip-flops reset to the beginning state when you're done. So this is what 7 looks like, but you know what, this is getting kind of complicated. Let's uh, do something that might make a little bit more sense. We want this to go through the loop, let's say, 5 times. We're going to need 5 flip-flops. All of the flip-flops pointing away, and then arrows pointing back. So let's see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we, you didn't see that. One, two, three, four, five. I guess it would work if this was here. Then this would be... Okay, so if you want it to do a loop n number of times, in this case you would need n flip-flops. Each one, each flip-flop pointing towards the exit, each arrow pointing back. This is kind of symbol-heavy, and it's not as fast as other arrangements, but I think it at least makes a lot more sense. Uh, these things don't even have to be in a line. You can have going like this, as long as each flip-flop is pointing towards freedom, and arrows pointing back the whole way. In this case, this is a loop that does it five times. One, two, three, four, five. What? One, two, three, four, five, six. I did it again. We don't need that. Yeah, five. So there's five flip-flops. It does this loop five times. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, you probably won't need to get this difficult or this hard into flip-flops right away but it's a skill that at some point you will need to learn. But other than that, uh, you should be good enough for the beginning of the tournament at least, so good luck to everyone, and I hope you do well, and have a lot of fun.